Hello all and welcome to episode 6 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged and uh, thank you for watching and listening all this while and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Apple podcast. Uh, we are also available on uh, PodSync uh, and, and various other uh, uh, platforms where you can use RSS to subscribe to this podcast. And uh, so, so as you see, we are not a great video production. Uh, we are mostly targeting uh, people to listen while they are driving or or they are walking their dog or or doing their exercise. That is that that is that is our target audience. Uh, uh, for for this podcast, so that you spend a few few uh, minutes in a day to listen to some part of this podcast. So with me today, I have uh, Kumaran, who is the chief mentor of Tiny Magic, and we have uh, Nitho, who is a chief technology officer of an unnamed firm, which he can talk about himself. Uh, so so today, actually, we are. Uh, targeting to talk about a role which uh, which Nito actually uh, does uh, uh, understand very well, and of course uh, uh, Kumaran actually advises a lot of uh, CTOs across uh, across organizations to help them improve what they are doing in their organization. So so Nito, starting with you, what why what do you think the new this role required for the CTO? To exist, why, why did we have always had these uh, uh, different kinds of roles? Why this new role called the chief technology officer? I, of course, it's not new; it's been around for some time. But for a lot of organizations, this still doesn't exist. What do you think? Uh, so I'm very happy that I got a new title uh, in the morning. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I do work for a service company where you rarely have anything called a CTO. But like, you know, I'm fortunate enough to work with. You're on mute, uh, uh, Kumaran. <laughs> I was telling that was Janaka who started. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 <laughs> that, that is fine, but it's yeah. okay. So, but he, I think you understand. Yes. I, he, I, I believe Nito could be a aspiring CTO. Okay. So worked worked with uh, um, a lot of CTOs around the world um, in terms of uh, different projects. Uh, so the idea comes in where the, where do you need the CTO is basically like you know somebody who uh, holds the responsibility for the business strategy. So um, what I'm seeing is like the CTO is one of the you know title that has been easily like you know, soft when the strategy changes like you know those days like you know it used to be the the CEO or like, you know, or the C, uh, COO, like, you know, getting swapped, uh, like, you know, because of the business strategy is changing. But nowadays, like, you know, when you, uh, when a new business strategy comes in into a company, it's not that like, you know, it, it happens in around the world, but like, you know, because we work with a whole lot of different companies and uh, especially with the technical driven companies. So when they want to change a business strategy, most likely, like, you know, they will bring in the new CTO. So the one who has the vision to of like you know how the new uh, you know business strategy is going to be mapped out in technically, and uh, the part of the CTOs is also now getting like you know redundant with uh, some level of uh, uh, cloud uh, cloudification at this point. When I said cloudification, it's just uh, mm -hmm. uh, a name that I just coined. But the the part is. Um, Everything once it's going into the cloud, like you know, architecture is is from the day one we talk about, right? Because like you know, architecture is driven by cost now. Right. Every right. company that is actually dry, uh, driven by technical thing, they actually like you know putting cost as a attribute, uh, quality attribute, which was never the case in the past. We always talk about what what the good thing that this uh, you know product has to do, and so but how much it cost. We never really talk about it. We leave it out to like you know the business or like you know the right, IT right. to figure out how it is. But now with the cloud, uh, you know, coming in, uh, everybody talks about the cost, like you know, uh, like from the day one. Even a, a technical, uh, you know, manager or like a general manager, he'll say, "Hey, give me an estimate of how much it's going to cost me monthly. Then I will approve this particular, you know, uh, solution." And also right. with all these, uh, what do you call them, new, like you know, so, uh, software as a solution, everything is like, you know, kind of now becoming the off the shelf uh, point of view, right? 
So the role of uh, a chief technical officer is becoming a little tricky these days. Mm -hmm. It's conventionally for if a company is not really into the, in the edge, like you know they are like you know, still doing things you know in the traditional manner. So he is almost like the guy who you know make the call of like you know what solution uh, is gonna you know comply with and like you know what is the uh, how how they gonna gonna map the you know uh, business strategy to this. But nowadays with the uh, the the technologies pouring in and the maturity of those technologies, even the governments are now moving into cloud. With that, you know, the I have seen, you know, very recently a, 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 a company that I worked for, uh, because they want to change the, uh, you know, uh, the strategy, business strategy, they just like you know, swap the whole uh, technical leadership. That was like, you know, un unbelievable, like, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a conventional uh, context, because they normally like swap the business, uh, you know, leaders, uh, but like they had to keep up the technical leaders because they want like, you know, have a continuation of, uh, you know, to keep things alive. So right. that's my initial point. Yeah. Right. So Kumar, do you, do you think uh, CTOs are becoming uh, uh, irrelevant now with cloud, or what do you what do you really think in in the, the, the what in the CTO? What what is the CTO expected to do? I think uh, it's. I think there's a pattern which I see, and I love fractals, right? Mm -hmm. And the fractal that I see, it has been there for some time, and then in some point in history we lost it and I guess now we are forced to come back to that point. In a sense if you look at it, we previously we had uh, things like trade and skill and there was a thing that uh, there would be apprentice, they will go through that, they will learn the skill and then come and then we got into me specializing in one thing. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of take a potter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a potter will work with a bunch of potters. Now, he will know everything about pottery, from where right. to get the clay to who it has to be sold, and he will go sell it in the market kind of a thing, right? So he was, for the lack of words, I would say, full stack skill set or a tradesman. Right. right. Okay, or a full stack one, right? right. And then we got into the specialization thing. Now, mm -hmm. that has created this... Uh, challenge and mm -hmm. similarly uh, if I kind of take it to the CTO or mm -hmm. technology itself I think the CTO role is becoming more like you tell me what's the business value that you're going to deliver mm -hmm. and also of course please give me proof that how technology will help it right. but you don't start um, I think that's how the CTO role is giving so they have to become like the tip of the arrow which will pierce through uh, the obstacles to deliver business value. And now they are going to be put at the tip. So previously the uh, CEO or the CEO could be at the tip. But now, um, like if you take any company worth its salt in today's world, right? Or Dunst, which is trying to make sense. Right. Uh, the CEO and the CTO are, let's see, it's not a person, right? It's the role, the thought process. Right has to be at the tip of the arrow. Right. Uh, if you take any of the new age startups, right, whether it is something like a Flipkart or a Zomato or your uh, Uber, these are the classical ones that we talk about. And even if you take in India today, if you take Reliance, right, yesterday we mm -hmm. had, uh, I had a guy for a walk-in and uh, put the set-top box for my Geo. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting. I was just thinking how well they took that journey. Now, if they had done a kind of waterfall approach to it, right? Kind of they say, you know, we have this one big bang, you get fiber off net, you get video, you get TV, you get everything and you're coolly done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably my entry barrier into that would have been higher. Right. Okay. So they kind of started off with telling uh, pay 4,500 bucks you give the you get the router and mm -hmm. the connection is free and you can use it and practically I used it for one year and of course that's mm -hmm. a cash uh, cash game but the point is the approach right so then a year later they come they say if you take full subscription now okay so they're just telling you know take full subscription if you take full subscription the set-top box is free mm -hmm. 
Now, honestly, I didn't even know what the set-top box was. That's the key point, mm-hmm. right? Me being right. a technologist, I didn't even know what right. a set-top box is, right? I'm just right. wanting an yearly subscription of my internet. And in that, right. there was a buy clause. If you want, you you will also get a uh, free set-top box. I said, okay, yeah, give. Now, mm-hmm. that guy walks in, he puts in the set-top box, okay? And then he connects my uh, TV HDMI to that. Mm-hmm. And you know what he just did? He made mm-hmm. my satellite TV redundant. Obviously, yes, yes. Just that one stroke, right? I don't need Tata Sky anymore. Right, right. Okay. Absolutely, means that is actually true in most houses today. <laughs> Whoever has internet, they have stopped using cable TV for for anything. Mm. And here it is like, see, and and the beauty of this is right. My user experience hasn't changed. I'm still looking at the TV. Right, right. Okay, in, at least in that other case, I have to switch to another form, get a com, get another uh, Google Cast or Apple yeah. TV kind of. Here, it's the same thing. Instead of that HDMI cable going to the Tata Sky setup box, it just went here. Minimal yes. change. Right. And that is what a CTO also needs to think of. It's not just giving a setup box. Right. It is like when will the technology? The whole experience. Come? The whole experience. How will it dovetail into the experience of a customer? How will we do that? How will when should this uh, the investments right, which Nitha was talking about? When should an investment go into technology? Right. How will it manifest? And that only a CTO can do. A CEO cannot do that. The CEO can give a broad vision, right. but where the money should be spent, how will it give maximum value for the money spent on technology? And I think that is the core CTO's responsibility. And obviously, he has to riding on top of technology as the investment. So he's more, he's become, uh, the analogy is he's more like a, a fund manager in a mutual fund. So, 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 so since you described all these responsibilities of which the CTO is now expected to do, then what does really a CIO do? I actually don't know. So are you are you suggesting no. that are you suggesting that uh, a CIO and CTO positions could be potentially played by the same person? Yeah, I I think so. I think so. I think it's it's a kind of I think it's an evolution pro, evolutionary process that we are going through. Mm-hmm. But I do not. Uh, so classically, they say CIO is for internal systems and CTO is for the conventional wisdom out there. Mm-hmm. Right? Is like how do I leverage technology to leverage external forcing business? Mm-hmm. And CIO is to leverage maximum value for internal. Unlocking internal value, CIO. Internally, external value, CTO. But mm-hmm. I think that's that's not how you need to think. It's all about unlocking external customer value. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, 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 um, I can't say that I'll keep my heart. Ha- how should I say? The doctor will all be coughing, puffing. Uh, he will uh, walk in tired inside, and the patient should feel all fresh. No, right. the hospital, the pay, all the works inside that have to be healthy. Then right. they can treat the patients, right? So I think that probably whether the role of CIO, I think it's a responsibility. It's a responsibility right. of delivering value of a technology to the end customer who's paying us. So right. Whether it's a CIO or the CIO, that role has to be played. And I think if it has to be made simple, merge both into one. Okay. But but in a, in a large organization, because uh, from what you just described, uh, CTO seems to be at the cutting edge of technology, cutting edge of the business, cutting edge of, uh, of, uh, of various uh, uh, solutions right whereas there are there are there are a lot of things which need to be done on day to day just keeping it alive in an organization right so so that is do you think this it is also cto's responsibility to keep it just alive in the whole uh, whole organization internally or externally you are forcing me to make blasphemy statements at the beginning of the year <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Let us start with and, the challenge, yes. Okay. So, if you're telling, if the CEO thinks my job is to keep the lights on, 
you missed the bus right then and there it's right. not his job to or his, her job to keep the lights on okay okay it is about unlocking the value of the potential and if you t- if a particular role is there just to take care of transactional stuff then that means that that role has not been well defined yet or it's not yet matured okay so you identify things which are transactional in nature you automate it and get it out of the way we have so much of techno no figure out a way of technology today right you have things like cloud monitoring rpa uh, cloud cr- cloud sourcing of all things push out all that stuff right work ag- actively be violent about it take the transactional stuff out of your thing that that's all about digital transformation move the mundane things out of you such that you work only on strategic stuff and if we are thinking that i need a role to take care of mundane stuff i think that itself is a wrong step to take ahead mm-hmm. so whoever is playing that role if he feels there's too much of mundane repetitive things automated use ai ml whatever right doesn't matter but get okay. it out of the way okay and then start focusing on real value adding stuff i think that's how i would look at it So, so, so Nito, in your experience, in your experience, what what have you seen? Where 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 have these two roles actually merged or disappeared? One has disappeared, the other. Where has it really happened? Before, like you know, going to the the merging part, like I will also say, like you know, like Kumaran said, he has the answer also because if you want to focus on something, somebody else has to focus on inside. <laughs> if you have, if somebody has to focus everything on the outside there has to be some person who has to take care of uh, this thing. so that's how i have like seen uh, in traditional also uh, because like you know um, when it comes to there are like in you know, a technical companies very much pretty much they are like you know part of the technical so there is actually c uh, um, there is cio who take care of uh, both cto and uh, you know cio role so there is they, for them like you know it's not a big uh, what do you call uh, uh, difference between like you know what they have to manage internally because most of them are either in cloud or whether, whether like you know, they are using some sort of uh, you know um, software as a service solutions even for the like you know um, uh, finance and uh, you know the other departments like hr finance and things so that it's all like you no know, kind of sourced out in in that sense like you know the cio has all the liberties and the like you know the the opportunity or like you know, the focus to actually focus on what they deliver to the external their customer but like you know the in the traditional organizations like you know there are too many things going on internally and clearly like you know you don't like you know kind of like you know have the same experience that your internal people has and your what your customer of course so like you know the in, to take care of this internal thing so there are companies like you know, who go through the you know acquisitions and mergers and all those kind of things so somebody has to make sure this all this information is put together like you know everything every teams are coming together everybody is like you know uh, you know marked as this company and all those kind of things that itself is a huge effort that goes in uh, you know for an example uh, rather than just like you know keeping the lights on like you know this is actually like you know bringing in two different entities together and things like that these kind of activities are there and like you know cios tend to like you know you know take care of that part so whatever goes in internally right and and you know it's not the same quality that we are talking about in terms of what we deliver really like you know in internal systems like you know we actually looking at like looking at uh, more of an optimization role in external system is a value uh, you know uh, an acceleration role there so uh, i mean kind of like you know if you try to like you know put one person to do both of these things he might go mad at this point <laughs> because what we are trying to do <laughs> okay all right all right So, 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 Kumar, do, do you do you do you agree to to no, what? No, absolutely what not. How will said? I agree to him? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, let me kind of you know see. Um, it, it's a strong belief or whatever I have, right? And I'm kind of very inspired by if you look at lean and agile that we talk about, right? It comes from Toyota way, and that's one of the first exposure to lean which I had, right? So, I. Ex- i kind of read about it and i tried to implement it in software very first that was way back in 2003 okay when the toyota way read it and i said wow this sounds interesting let me try it for it also now the key thing there is they talk about 
something called a muda and muri there are two kinds of wastes right and the objective of the lean is to reduce these wastes and the key principle there is do activities which add value to the customer if you are doing activities which doesn't add to the value to the customer don't do it it's a waste so when we do this bifurcation right mentally there is a disconnect happening between what matters to the customer and what i'm doing a classical example is right when we go to a quality department and i ask ask them right uh, i've done this thing as a just a quiz whenever I meet any quality guy ask this question 99% of them say we are there to ensure good quality uh, make sure defects are less okay health care processes are followed and like that only 1% comes and says our job is to ensure customer satisfaction okay a good quality product is where the customer is delighted he will recommend the product he will be the salesman of a product so how do you say a product is good quality i think it's very simple if your customer goes and sells your product to somebody else it is very good quality if he doesn't complain it is decent quality if he becomes evangelical about it right then it is extremely good quality that's it right okay so and so the but the quality department right they are kind of thinking i am inside my boundary outside the fence of my factory my role i have nothing to do but his mm-hmm. job is actually responsibility is for the audience out there but in his mind it is towards the coo to say defect rate is less but that is not his responsibility so hence i have this problem when people get focused inside the boundary and they mm-hmm. start doing weird stuff right when you kind of do this it's like uh, i mean I, there are a lot of instances when you get internally focused you really don't give a damn so it's i'll give a very simple very simple example right uh, in one of the large companies uh, in the video conference rooms there was those remote controls right which will help you control the tv and the web conference things okay now what was happening is uh, there were people who i mean crazy stuff people take away the remotes and go to their desks by mistake or what okay okay and then in some cases it gets lost whether it's stolen somebody took it and forgot it that kind of a stuff and then batteries gets missed there kind of a thing people take it for their home to for their tv <laughs> remotes i don't know, maybe yes yeah batteries <laughs> won't be there in that remote okay okay now what is the solution the it guys came up with the cost was obviously going up they had to replace remotes and things like that right now when you look at it from a it perspective and say my focus is my department i have to reduce the costs of my department okay what did they do in a six floor building okay they will keep all the remotes with the security guy on the ground floor so if you book a meeting room you come all the way six floor down sign in a register show your id card take the remote and go up there after you finish the meeting come back six floors down give it to the security guy sign and out and go back process yes done compliant yes is the cost reduced absolutely are there any more losses no who the hell cares about the guy who's conducting the meeting and the business efficiency going down that is the problem i have when you are internally focused Right, right. Okay, so, so I so, get really yeah. emotional about it because right. it's like we, it's like operation success patient dead. Right, right. So, so, so your, so your recommendation is that the unless there is value to be delivered, whether it is the CIO or the CTO, they they should always be focused at at uh, delivering value, and this that value could be technically. outside the company or inside the company it could be the the value which uh, which is derived by the employees or by the customers do, do you Who think that there has to be a, yeah so, do, do you think that there is a difference between what value is perceived internally to what value is perceived externally is there a is there a big difference in that or we should treat value as value and this is independent of who is actually being targeted and as we were talking some time back right copying is great okay i would actually take inspirations from amazon 
so for example right uh, one of my friends who joined amazon um, he wanted a particular he works on the kindle he wanted a particular api from amazon marketplace okay to show up a feature on kindle now he went to his gm and he said you know i've been trying to ask an api with them they are not doing it for me okay can you help so the gm looked at him and said uh, you go and convince them and uh, see if they have a value in uh, exposing that api on kindle they will get it done it's your problem not mine okay so now the guy who is developing the api for kindle has to understand amazon's marketplace who their customers are what their needs is and build a story around how that api will add value to them he cannot just restrict to oh my kindle i need this feature okay because my product will look good now i'm telling this is external facing but two different products yeah, right right oh, okay so yeah, even in right. that there is an internal external thingy going on kindle right. is mine okay i want all good things here so you give me everything why why should i why should you spend that effort to give it to me so this similar, is actually it's, yeah this is it's very simple similar I means i think the concept now lot of organization because example which you gave for amazon uh, what they are trying to call this thing is just like open source they are call, calling it inner source right so the inner source is like open source but inter, inside the organization right so that so if there is an api it is already available in the in the git repository anybody can just go in and see whether it makes sense or not and they can just use the api right so it's or they will have it published internally somehow so that all apis are exposed and this is the whole concept of inner source so so that that i think uh, uh, is is probably a, a, a more open organization kind of a solution which probably somebody like a cto should 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 target creating and um, you know making the devil is advocate at this point so <laughs> go ahead <Deepa. laughs> there is a scenario so we are pressed on time in terms of uh, delivery for a customer this thing and like you know we have our you know the good uh, intentions of like you know delivering it sooner and also the way that we want to deliver it right um so basically like you know we would like you know, like you know we would want resources we would want uh, some uh, website to be white listed in the internal organization uh, you know so many things like you know we want because like you know you cannot do much like you know, with, with a restricted environment so um so we always run into this i actually at least myself like run into this particular problem and i also always have to play the opposite of it as well because like you know i have to convince uh, my delivery team Uh, to understand like you know why they are not getting it at the same time i have to fight with the uh, the it or the like you know the cio organization to like you know make their service better so that like you know we don't have to fight with them so i i mean I, most of the time i end up in the middle so what what i quickly realizing is like you know everybody will say hey i want a laptop with an admin rights very simple so but like you know it is the very the the, the 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 most that's one of the like you know common like an you know, argument that everybody would have in an it organization which is controlled in terms of uh, you know security everybody wants uh, admin rights because they can install stuff and things like that but on the opposite side of it with the gdpr and all those kind of thing uh, you know uh, you know regulations coming in they are asking the providers to actually enforce Uh, what can be like you know like you know so the 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 companies who are actually giving work to us they are saying you make sure you you are you sign this paper that you are taking care of your side they don't tell you much like you know how you take care of it so these guys have to figure out everything that they can actually do and that means like they most of the time go overboard in that case but if i had to play both roles i will be torn because like you know my one like a side will say hey give everything oh come on like you know, give all make every laptop have admin rights but like you know on the other other side like if something goes wrong like you know you got to pay 20 million you know penalty or like you know, and your you know your your company's name is got, uh, right next day so that would be like you know, uh, you know i would say like you know, from the cio point of view he he's the guy who is going to say oh no 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 like you know we cannot do it <laughs> i think so, that's an interesting point neto see i think what has to happen is a 
a very conscious connection between the metrics which are let's say it's all metrics right uh, kind of at the end of the day there should be a good overlap of metrics between the cio and the cto for example like let's take the admin case itself right if the employee productivity in a pure development is going to drop by 30% or 40% because of some implementation okay so i'm working with a large company here around 3000 employees there okay external mails won't go to their mailbox plain simple <laughs> why because it's safe mm-hmm. and i'm kind of like can't i even no you send any mail with attachment it won't come i'm sending them a pdf on what architecture is or what a good habit is the mail doesn't reach them how can i send it to you no you can't you send it to my gm okay he will forward it to us only he has email address <laughs> that I, is like stifling stifling the whole communication see i think what has happened is you, we have created these chinese walled gardens between them that should not be happening now you want to have two different roles right it's okay but what really matters should be one of the key things there what matters to the business so if an employee has to be productive they have to be productive and that constraint is what will make the cio innovative otherwise he will just become compliant absolutely right. okay so, so that's a tricky like, part know, as, it, yeah so basically like you know, nowadays for joke like you know, people say like you know uh, virus is better than uh, antivirus because like you know virus couldn't have caused all these like you know problem with their productivity <laughs> <laughs> so as so people Correct. are putting in so, so the c- cios are are putting in place things which are actually inhibiting people from getting their work done on day to day basis it, like kumaran said it is the disconnect because the, the the you know the alignment is not there so people are like you know pushed into like you know uh, you know cope with that particular so this is one of the kind of uh, what you call um, uh, you know undersupply uh, yeah it's a huge yeah. performance undersupply and see and you were talking about that conversation points and collaboration right a video talk is much more better than a phone talk correct but then there is these companies who right. just in- disable video on all the laptops why security reasons point blank that's it <laughs> right or or, rec- or recording the videos so by while the conversation is going on they have the video but you cannot record it <laughs> i think you that cannot share it <laughs> ah okay so i mean is that something that so you, they have to get innovative right so the constraint has to come that video will happen collaboration needs to happen now you figure it out because that is needed for my customers business right okay so then then it creates an opportunity for an innovation to happen unless you have that constraint set in people take tend to take the easy way out it's just human psychology now if this constraint was put probably they will have talking base right where you will have a laptop set up with some video it's just like the coffee booths that we walk into two three seat three seater kind of right. a thing where those laptops are enabled so walk in there switch a button and then join right. right you need not do it on but that thought process will only happen if that constraint is set that collaboration should not suffer because of this right so that so, disconnect needs to be avoided right so i i think uh, this this debate on whether ceo cto and cio are to be the same person or not will will continue yes. and there are, there are there are uh, uh, we will revisit this discussion maybe later on in this uh, in this in this year and hope to have uh, great conversations like the same which we had today so thank you nito for for your valuable time and and insight into what the ctos can do and and uh, of course you become a cto one day uh, that's that's our wish that's what uh, we made you today uh, so congratulations on that and uh, thank you kumaran for for as as always great insights into into your experiences and your suggestions to to the audience thank you and uh, see you next time thank you see you bye